You have sat uh, on a table where such conversations have been held. I want to understand, you know, who should bear this burden? Because you saw even during COVID, yes. even after there was that um, holiday and that relief uh, of our school fees, some parents were still struggling to pay that. And now Dr. Tari here is telling us that going forward, chances are that we are going to go beyond the fees that was charged even pre-COVID. I mean, where, what, what are we looking at here and who should bear the burden? By way of background, let's say that what, where, what is our operating environment? Mm. And our operating environment is such that we have a constitution that gives the right to education to a child. And that right is supposed to be compulsory and it's supposed to be free. Basic education. And basic education stems all the way from ECD to secondary school. That is the environment that we are operating under. But the complexity is that a lot of our secondary schools are boarding. So that now the government can meet the cost because government will tell you that day schooling is free. You know, day schooling is free. But who, meets, who is supposed to meet the cost of secondary education? And that is where a lot of us have been doing campaigns to say, deboardingize our schools. Mm -hmm. Because this <coughs> concept of boarding is what has caused uh, our education to look very expensive. Because uh, really, if your child is going to be spending at school, then there are costs that will um, accrue. There is uh, food, there is uh, you know, boarding costs, there is electricity, there is water and all that. So are you, are you telling us that government should meet the cost of your child sleeping in school? That is a conversation. Mm -hmm. But you see, the same government is the one that is supposed to support the deboardingization of our secondary schools so that they become accessible. Day schools are really accessible to many parents because um, then what you need there is about the tuition costs which government is meeting about 22,000 um, for every child per year. And so that in, in this whole conversation, to, if one person has let us down and that has been government. Because even today as we wake up to the news that there is going to be a fee increment on the part of parents, government has not increased the funding to education even by a coin. Mm -hmm. Since 2013, when government decided that we are going to be giving X, Y, Z amount to, uh, day, to support day schooling, that amount has not been progressing as you would expect the amount to progress. Do not mind that it is the responsibility of government to really offer basic education. I think we've really taken our standards too low. I sit with in, 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 uh, in some tables and I listen to conversations, especially coming uh, from school heads who seem to be wanting to pass the buck you know, to the parents. And I really understand them because they have to run the institutions. And yet government is so rigid on financing education. But if we are to remain, um, to hold government to account totally and completely, we must say that the right to education of a child must be protected. Government must up its game in terms of uh, funding education. And when we say that, it is not to mean that we are encouraging <coughs> parents to be lazy. No, 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 no. We knew that when we were making the constitution of 2010, mm -hmm. then if we really want parents to start paying for the cost of basic education, we must have a referendum in this country and we revisit our constitution and we say that no, we do not agree as a country that basic education is a right for every child that should be free and compulsory. But as long as we are implementing this constitution, we must remain uh, guided that we are implementing basic education that is supposed to be free. When, when some people um, are discussing, don't think about your own circumstances. Maybe you can afford, and maybe you think that you can meet government halfway. We are not discussing about you here. We are discussing about that child that is an orphan, that doesn't have anybody. Their right to education is sacred, and that child has to be protected. And I think that is a premise. And when you see um, the push, like now, uh, the, the conversation about CBC, which we shall come to, has, has really brought to the fore what a lot of us have been saying about the cost of boarding secondary school. It really does not make sense that a child who is attending, uh, for example, Gatina Primary School, they have been doing day school for eight years. But when they are admitted in Form 1, mm. they must go and sleep in school. And now the cost of education then becomes that that child must pay 56000 a year yet they can still commute to the school and back. I think there is, we yeah. really need, need to change our <clears throat> minds about it. Uh -huh. And the, cost, the, the question of cost is coming to haunt us because even as much as we want to complain, you cannot pack your child, take them to the school and do not expect to pay for the cost of feeding, the All cost right. of washing and so on. All right.